Welcome to episode seven. Last time we generated some very basic procedural generation. Today we're going to continue that discussion and apply multiple frequencies of our uh, open simplex noise. And we're also going to apply a function that uh, tends to create islands rather than just scattered land masses. Before we apply the multiple frequencies though, uh, let's talk about um, the exponent variable and we'll start using that now. So this is the function that we're going to apply and we're basically going to take the noise value that was computed here and we're going to put it into this power function. And what that'll do is it'll essentially do um, the noise value raised to the exponent like so. So um, let me open up a graph and I'll kind of demonstrate uh, why this was useful. So this is the Desmos graphing calculator and I kind of uh, created our y equals uh, our noise value uh, raised to the a power. And that was the exponent that we passed into our struct uh, as the exponent field. So if you recall, we bounded all of our noise um, from zero to one. So let's zoom in on that further, just to kind of indicate that this is what this is the area we're looking at. And then we have the exponent value that we can change. So this is what would normally happen uh, without the power, without being raised to a power, because if you're being raised to the first power, then you're basically not doing any transformation. Uh, but we can scale this down to a lower value. And what this will do is it'll make less water because what'll, what's going to happen is the very, the normal low values are going to be raised up like 0 0.1 is going to be raised up to uh, 0 0.4. And then also like high values, they'll still be uh, fairly high, but they're not going to be raised as far as these lower values. So we're kind of squeezing the uh, low noise values upwards. So this will produce less water basically because there's going to be less low values uh, on the lower end of the noise. And then we can also go in the opposite direction and this will squeeze it in the uh, other way. So this will produce more water uh, and less land and you can squeeze all the way down, right? This only goes to 10, but you could keep squeezing all the way down. And then it, this would just keep getting compressed and compressed uh, into this corner to the point where like, uh, if our noise value generates right now from zero to 0.5, you're basically still at zero. We do, if you recall, we defined our water line here at 0 0.5. So, um, the noise value would have to be above like 0.95 just to be above the water. So this will reduce the water, or this will increase the amount of water significantly and decrease the amount of land. So the exponent is a nice way to tweak things. Um, personally, I found 0 0.8 was kind of a nice medium ground uh, to generate a little bit of extra water, uh, but it's not essential. So that's what this function is going to be doing. It's basically taking our noise value, modifying it a little bit with this exponent, and then it's going to return that noise value. It, but if you recall in our if you recall, we set it to one here. So let's change this to 0 0.8 just to tweak things a little bit and then we'll rerun. And then uh, in noise map, I had forgotten to import map, which has the power function that we were using. Okay, but we still have a lot of uh, very smooth terrain. So uh, let's see if we can fix that by overlaying multiple frequencies. So we'll define an octave object and what this will basically hold is it's gonna hold a frequency that we're trying to um, apply and then we're going to also hold the scale which is kind of the amplitude from zero to one that we want to apply this frequency at then our noise map object will uh, create a list of different octaves that we're trying to apply and then our constructor function will pass that list in uh, externally and then we'll uh, set it set the field octaves to the passed in octaves list now in here, we can basically create a for loop to loop over all of our octaves uh, and then apply each frequency at its specified uh, scale. So we'll kind of rewrite this um, as above. Um, so we'll just create a for loop. And then we'll have our X and our Y noise objects. Um, but instead of using the um, the frequency from there, we'll use the n.octaves.i uh, frequency. And that'll get multiplied by our uh, six, float 64 casted X and Y positions. Uh, next, we'll actually compute our noise, um, and we have our, it's very similar to what we had before, except uh, for each octave, we also specified a scale. So we'll do n.octaves, i.scale, times, um, times the noise value that we computed at that uh, x and y frequency noise. Uh, also, before we were just assigning the ret value once, but now we want to add it every single time. So it'll, it'll be ret plus equals uh, this new octaves um, amplitude. And we can delete all of our old code and I think that should do it. So um, now in our main function, all we need to do is uh, set up the octaves that we want to use and uh, pass those into our uh, noise map creation. So this will define our list of different octaves. This was our really low frequency uh, noise value that we had found and we'll specify a 0 0.6 amplitude for this. 
and they'll kind of go in the high, higher frequency direction where we're uh, increasing this frequency number. This will add a, a few higher frequencies and make them a slightly more prominent. So let's just add one and see what happens. Oh, so uh, we, yeah. So the last thing we need to do is pass into octaves here and then we can run. Okay, and now you'll see that there's, there's a little bit more detail uh, added into this. There's a little bit more uh, high frequency detail added in. So let's just keep doing that and we'll add a few more. So we'll go in the high frequency direction again, uh, but decrease the amplitude a little bit. That has a little bit more high frequency now. So let's just go all the way. Okay, so this is the whole list that I came up with uh, to start with. So we'll use that and, re and we'll rerun. All right, so this is what our map looks like now. And you can see there's kind of like a lot of um, uh, kind of cool little peninsulas that get built still, but there's still a general trend of what where the land is. Um, and if you zoom in, zoom out all the way, you'll see there's some nice land masses and then some kind of thin bridges that connect them. Uh, also notably, um, one thing that I didn't talk too much about is that uh, now that we've added the octaves in, uh, there is the potential for someone to uh, add like a really high value here. Like they could make the amplitude 100. And then if you ran it uh, now, um, that would just like bump everything up so high that everything would be grass, right? So the kind of the assumption of these octaves is that the amplitudes all add up to one. Um, Maybe in the future, we will uh, fix our noise map creation function to scale these uh, as kind of like a weight-based scaling of whatever the user inputs. But for now, I'm just going to add it to do, uh, and we'll fix it later. So one thing I don't like about our procedural generation right now is that uh, the uh, what, what gets generated is kind of this like haphazard uh, land mass thing. Uh, so, so what would be nice to have is if we can have... Um, kind of one large island, and that'll represent our game world, at least at the starting point. And we can adapt this later. So, but how we'll do that is we'll basically squeeze things in the middle upwards uh, so that they're forced to be on land. Uh, and then we'll squeeze things uh, that are towards the edges uh, to be downwards so that they're kind of um, always in the water. So we'll define a little section inside of our tile map generator generating four loops, uh, and that'll hold all of our kind of islandification code. And that, that's what's gonna cha change this height map into a height map that better represents an island, but it'll still have some of the appropriate noise attached to it. Okay, so let's talk about how we're gonna create an island from our uh, original map. Uh, so if you imagine kind of what we want, uh, what, what we wanna start with is uh, some sort of island thing that gets built and then it has some weird edge noise generated from our Perlin noise. But the thing we wanna prevent is we wanna prevent land from appearing on the edges. Uh, and we also want to ensure that there's some amount of land uh, in the middle. So how we're gonna accomplish this is uh, we're basically gonna take our noise, shrink it down, and then we're gonna overlay uh, a general trend, uh, which is this red line. And that general trend is gonna kind of represent what the uh, island runoff is gonna be. So we're almost taking like a guaranteed island type uh, height, and then we're gonna apply noise to it to give it a better, uh, like to give it more interesting edges on around the island. So the equation for this is basically going to look something like this. Uh, first, we need to compress down this noise function that goes from zero to one into half. So how we'll do that is we'll do height divided by two. So that's just an easy way of, of squeezing the zero to one range to, from zero to 0 0.5. So this will accomplish that. The next thing we want to do is we want to generate a function for uh, this red line. So that's actually just going to look like this. 1 minus d over 2. And how you can think about that is there's going to be a dx. And then there's going to be a dy. And then... Uh, you can use different distance, func distance functions depending on what type of uh, game you're making or what type of uh, procedural generation you want to do. I'm just going to use Euclidean distance. So this would be D. And uh, this is basically going to be equal to the square root of DX squared plus DY squared. DX is going to be equal to the X value of this point divided by the map size because we're kind of thinking of the map as a range of 0 to 1.1. So we just divide uh, the like x position, the x tile number uh, by the map size, and that'll, give, that'll kind of scale everything down to 0 uh, to 1, 1. 
Then we also want to subtract uh, 0.5. And that'll give us the dx. So you can kind of think of this as the, uh, this is the x position um, of this point, which is our arbitrary point in the map. Uh, and then this is the x position of the center point of the map. Uh, y is going to be a very similar function, but I'm not going to write it out. It's basically going to be y divided by map size minus 0.5 as well, because the y position of this center point is 0.5. So we take these dx and dy, and then we'll uh, uh, apply them to this distance, this general Euclidean distance formula. Then we'll have our d, and then we can use our d in this function here to generate the red line. And then once we have the red line and we have our general noise function, both of those are squished down to a range of, like the, the range of this one is also uh, 0 to 0 0.5. Then we can add these together, and then we'll have kind of this uh, general trend like so. So now that we have our, our uh, general red line here, there is actually one issue with this currently, uh, and that's based off of how we've defined d. So the assumption that this makes is that the d variable is going to go from uh, 0 to 1. Uh, so like for example, uh, if we measure the distance horizontally here to the edge, that would be 1 half. Um, so the maximum distance you can find if you're going to the edge, which is what we want to guarantee uh, as water, uh, you'll find a 1 half here, right? Uh, so we want this to actually, uh, we want this range to be actually 1. And the reason that is, is because we want um, the red to start here at the, at the zero point and then add noise to it because the noise will only be 0.5 that'll be less than our water line so that kind of guarantees it as being uh, water there so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply uh, this d times 2 and that'll just uh, easily scale the one half range that we have uh, into a range of one let's plug in a few numbers just to make sure we understand how this will operate so in the center the distance from the center is going to be zero so it'll be 1 minus 0, and that'll give us a half. So that'll be basically this point right here. And that works out. And let's do an edge case where uh, we're basically as far away as possible. So for example, um, uh, at this horizontal, we would have a distance of 1. And uh, so we'd have 1 minus 1 uh, divided by 2, and that would be basically 0 over 2, which is a 0. So then the height um, is basically 100% governed by our height, our noise function, which we had calculated before. And that's basically all there is to it. So let's start coding. Okay, so then back in our code, uh, we've added this um, uh, little section, which is going to modify our height variable uh, to kind of make it more like an island. So as I discussed before, we'll basically compute dx and dy. So dx is going to be the uh, x location divided by the map size to kind of find it on the range of 0 to 1.5. Uh, so that's the point of, of x, but kind of scaled down. And then we're going to subtract out 0 0.5, which is the point at the center of the map. And then dy is going to be the exact same thing, but for the y variable. And then d is going to be the uh, math.squared of dx times dx plus dy times dy. And then we can also uh, uh, do that same exponential scaling that we want. And that could potentially uh, fill out our island a little bit more versus uh, like squishing it down more. So we can uh, scale this as well. So I'm just going to call this uh, island exponent. I'll put it up here. Well, we'll call that five. And that was just a kind of a number that I tweaked around to eventually find. And then we can apply our final equation, which combines the uh, uh, dist the height caused by distance from the center plus the uh, original noise height. So there you have it. All right, let's run our code and see what happens. Cool. So now we have a little bit of an island. Uh, and because I picked five, uh, it looks a little bit smooth around the center. Like you can kind of tell that it's a circle uh, being applied to this island. So let's decrease that five to something maybe a little bit better. So we'll kind of uh, do a binary search of different values to see, to see when we find one that we like. So this one looks a little bit better. Um, let's get a little bit further, I think. Um, so this almost feels like there's not enough island, like there's too much distance from the edge. So I'm gonna go back up again. Let's just try two. Okay. Yeah, this is, seems like a pretty good uh, starting point, at least for our island. And then our people can run around and uh, do stuff eventually. We can also scale this uh, up to a thousand to build a truly large world. Cool. So that, that one actually looks a lot more interesting because now there's like little uh, like lake kind of things in the middle uh, because it kind of goes out further. So and little islands that you could potentially reach. Cool. I feel like we've made some pretty good progress in terms of what our starting island will look like. Uh, there obviously need to be a lot more uh, features added, such as trees and rocks and uh, eventually enemies to battle. 
But uh, I think this is a good starting point. Well, that's all I have for today. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button.